Go here. Okay. Does my head look like it's really long? Hi everyone. Thanks for watching our weird virtual Zoom version of uh, a YouTube thing. And uh, today I'm very excited because I'm going to be talking to my great friend George Northwood, who I've missed so much. Hello. I've missed you too. Where are you? Where are you holding up? I'm from northwest London from home in quarantine with Willow. So nice. And Willow isn't your daughter. Uh, she's a dog. She's not my daughter. She's my, well, She is my daughter, but she is a dog. She's your pet daughter. Got it, got it. The sort of genesis behind this particular call is that I've been sending you SOS, my hair looks terrible texts. And um, seeing as lockdown is now extended and extended, you very kindly have offered to walk me through a haircut which will be appearing on your YouTube channel next, after yeah. this video. But first, before you get any kind of haircut, or before you even attempt to cut your own hair, which is what I'm going to be doing, um, obviously a consultation with your hairdresser is incredibly important now more than ever. I think that when I'm in a salon, obviously I'm talking to you and I'm very lucky because I've known you for 15 years or more. What would you say are your tips for making sure that you're having a clear line of communication? They say that like everyone's always embarrassed to bring in pictures and when they bring in the pictures like oh I know I shouldn't bring in pictures. I don't know who started that that sort of rule but I always say imagery is really good to have and yeah. you know because you basically need the hairdresser and you to be in the same sort of visual reference in your heads. And yeah, that you yeah. need to get on the same page and often the only way to do that is by a picture so it's yeah. like I want to look like this because otherwise hairdressing language is very different to real person language well I know that you guys have you struggle with what a real inch is worth <laughs> <laughs> you're always like um I'm just gonna cut off two inches which in my mind is this and in hairdresser language it's this so there's some Hairdr male hairdressers out there that are really flattering themselves um, and in turn not flattering your haircuts. But uh, have you ever reduced anyone to tears, George? Has anyone cried in your seat? Um, yes, I have to say. No! <laughs> yeah. Even you! Um, oh my God. No, it's kind of, it's really weird because you go through this kind of, it's only happened a couple of times, but I will hold my hand up and say that it has happened, is yeah. that... People, they kind of, people never really cry, but they go quiet. There's this point where they go kind of, um, I, you know, there was an instant, we'll probably come later, where I did your fringe and it was like, there's this kind of weird where all of a sudden the flow stops and the client sort of shuts down, I would say. <laughs> and goes like, they go quiet, the conversation drops off, they start to fidget, they start to like touch I their love hair. It. And then... Then it then the hairdresser gets thrown off and then the hairdresser goes a little bit kind of loses their kind of way and then you both become a bit of a mess and then eyes kind of well up <laughs> <laughs> and eyes well up and then and then they bring over the drinks trolley at that point they're like madam would you yeah. like it? Yeah. Yeah. And then we go elephant in the room bit where it's like, do we bring it up that the hair's too short or do we kind of like see it through till the end and just... I like the English version, which I imagine is just everyone just keeps quiet. You carry on. Yeah. I'm trying to think I what think... references you've always given me. Where's your reference been? Kirk Bain has been one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I They've mean, usually been I... men. Well, yeah, it's the same in clothes, you know. Like, I think my reference is... A lot. I like I like tension between things, so I like um, you know I would never wear ultra masculine things without having a pretty necklace or jewelry piece on, and it's the same thing. You know, I am someone who identifies as a woman, and I think I like kind of referencing male haircuts, but it's more about the spirit of that thing. And often men, when they've got medium length hair, have had a short haircut and let it grow out. So I think what I mean is I just like it to look kind of organic and not like a do but more like something that kind of naturally evolved into that um yeah. but yeah i have wanted to look like kirk Cobain in the past i've also wanted to look obviously for years and years and years exactly like jane birkin obviously um, yes but i think my most successful haircut with you is when i wanted to look like me which is when you know you gave me the bob with the fringe yeah. 
And yes. I really remember leaving the salon feeling elated because I just started a new TV job and I had had this long, long hair for so long. And then I was like liberated into my own character. So I think a haircut can really make you kind of, you know, feel most like yourself. This video is my consultation with you ahead of cutting my own hair. So yeah. before we do that, let's take a little look back at some of the more successful or less successful haircuts that I've endured. <laughs> and then maybe we can make a decision on what this barnet should do next. So first up was what I like to fondly call the dog in the wig hairstyle. It's, it's very natural. I'm very young. I wish I had that skin still. Um, and it's also like, it's obviously pre-product, pre-tonging. It's the silkiest hair you can ever see. It's like, and a fringe. I don't think that looks that bad, but it is very schoolgirl. Yes. I I don't think it looks that bad, but it does look very young. And what it was is the, what makes that look young is I always find it's that kind of, what's that breed of dog that's got like the dog ears? <laughs> What is it? The dog that's got the... Spaniel. Cocker Spaniel? It's a Spaniel, yeah. Spaniel. Right, okay, so Spaniel ears, yeah. <laughs> so the problem is, is when they used to do... When they when you were young, they used to like, let's well, cut the length, let's cut the fringe. And it was just that kind of like, you know, it's almost like, actually, it's the perfect cutting for at home cutting. It's so simple. You just like cut around the bottom and you cut the fringe. But the problem is, is that because like now what we do is we connect your fringe like to the rest a little bit, although we don't like to do too much because I know you don't like it to go mullety. But the problem is when you used to just have fringe length, it just, they go a bit dog eerie because they're just like... They swing like one, <laughs> which is why you say dog in a wig, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like so, an actual yeah. spaniel. <laughs> this next haircut is, so then after the dog in the wig, I had a bob with a fringe and then after that it grew out, blah, blah, blah. But then we got to this moment where I was moving to America. I didn't want to, I was doing a television show on MTV and I didn't want big American hair, which is actually a misunderstanding of mine as a Brit. I thought Americans had this wonderful you know, big volume and they all wanted to look really shiny. Not necessarily the case, but I decided to go after an American icon of mine, Kurt Cobain, because I thought if I look like a boy, um, then they can't make me look glamorous. So talk me through this haircut and specifically the colour, I think, is an interesting thing. I really remember you doing this because I remember you coming in and it was, it, I think you were just about to go to Glastonbury. You came in with like a trilby hat on or something. <laughs> I know, I've got really clear <laughs> memories. Um, we were yeah, like... The Trilby stage. I like the yeah. Libertines, okay? I, didn't, I was in Camden, I was wearing Winkle Pickers Trilbies and I was just rocking out. <laughs> I just remember, I know, I think you had the shape at the front and we cut it to the shortest shape at the front, yeah. which we've threatened about doing again. I love you? it, yeah. I would happily yeah. do that again, yeah. I love that look on you and it was very... Yeah, it was all really one length to the jaw and it, it's really great that look because it gives you a really not you have got a really strong jaw but it really does give you a strong jaw and also it's just really easy like you say because you can just kind of it doesn't involve much styling and you can't give it a big blowout because it's so short which I think was yeah, partly exactly. the reasoning wasn't it and we chopped into it so it was a bit messy so they couldn't make it go like you know but speaking of the jawline thing for other people how important is the kind of how true is that whole face shape suits a certain haircut thing? Um, it's really true, but actually what I found is that I find it, when you start to say to people, what shape is your face? Is it heart, diamond, round, oblong, semicircle, whatever? Um, Egg. Uh, <laughs> diamond. <laughs> I feel that's too confusing. I feel like face shapes, it's a little bit, for me, it's a bit of a myth. How I look at it is... If you've got really soft facial features, you can carry off a hard haircut. So you've got quite a soft face. Right? <laughs> well, your features are quite soft. There's no I edges. Know, I know that you've said, like, horsey references, but I don't think you are. <laughs> but... <laughs> George, you're cracking me up. <laughs> I know you think you look like a horse and a spaniel, but actually you look like a plate of butter. That's what hairdressers do. We kind of like, yeah. Um... But no, I think if you've got soft features, you can carry off like a really sharp haircut. My examples are always this, like take like 
Halle Berry, for me, if she grows her hair long, it looks a bit like there. Kylie, yeah. long hair, there. As soon as you cut their hair off or give them something, they can carry off a skinhead because they've got such soft pixie-like faces. Yeah, yeah. So if you've got soft features, you can carry off a hard haircut. So for you, because your features are quite soft, like a, a hard haircut like that bob actually looks really nice. But sometimes you can be quite hard and you want to own that hard thing. So Anna Winter, that hard bob, she wants, she gives off power, she gives off structure, yeah. she gives off I mean business. So she doesn't really have a relaxed attitude. So have you ever done her hair? I have touched her hair, yes. I wouldn't say I've done it. I kind of like have smoothed some flyaways away. Is it real? Yeah, it's hundred percent real. She's got great thick hair. And she Make was it. lovely. I did up her dress. That was more exciting Aww. than touching the flyaways. So I want to talk about um this moment I don't remember, which was a very severe fringe that I had, where it's almost like it's almost a half a bowl cut. It this is, fringe. yes. What happened? <laughs> I think I may have actually just by mistake done it a little bit short in the middle and then I just kind of went like that to sort of put it right. But maybe that was it. But we did go through, hang on a minute, like for people that don't want to have to get their fringe cut too often, if you had like a micro fringe that went like that, you'd look kind of, unless you're cool and kooky, you would look a bit village idiot. So maybe we did something short and then took yeah, it down like true. this to it lasted. I don't know. I feel like we might have cut that fringe. That very fringe, I think we cut at the end of a shoot and you went straight to something like the Brit Awards or something with that. Yeah. Fringe. But for people, other people considering a fringe, like what's the what's best to bear in mind? Because people comment sometimes. I'm not going to say people are always commenting on me. It's, but occasionally people will be like, oh, I don't know whether I should get a fringe. So it's obviously part of the bigger conversation. Um, I don't find them that high maintenance because I just wash the fringe when it gets greasy and not the rest of the hair. I'm like... Yeah, and I also... I think we should actually make sure, like, people... I think people should really take note of that because I use, I learned that from you because I don't have this fringe issue, um, that you can just wash your fringe because I think that's a really good tip. And sometimes dry shampoo doesn't sort of uh, cut it, does well, it? it gets to a point with dry shampoo where it just stops working and it kind of makes matters worse in a way yeah. so it's not actually this like cure-all product that you can use. it's great i think occasionally in the right moment but failing that i just tie up this and then i just wash literally the front bit. Yeah. we're gonna move on to the next haircut in the phase i'd like to talk about which is from fringe festival to straight up mullet so there was a time about five years ago uh i think i was going to milan because i was gonna attend a prada fashion show i was very excited about it and i was in a moment in time where I was willing to take risks on the hair once more, it had just been dyed a bit dark. I, I had this idea in my head, I want dark hair, a bit Joan Jett, uh, and a mullet, because mullets were like flying high at the time. Everyone wanted a mullet, um, which you, you decided to help me with. I wanted a mullet, you gave it to me, it did not suit me. It didn't work. It was so bad. When I look at the picture reference now, I'm like, oh, it was okay. But that's, I think people get confused with that. They look back at pictures and say, I really like that hair. But they, they're drawn to the pictures, but then the reality was actually different. I, well, I kept it up for about three months. I actually know what was off with the haircut because I've, I've concluded from that whole experience that... Yeah. You, assume, with your hair type, it's actually very, it's fine, but there's lots of it. And so... When you, I thought when I kind of layered yours through and made it a bit kind of mullety, I thought it would do something very different to what it did. And yeah. actually, when you layer your hair and just kind of, because uh, it's quite fine, it just goes really flat. Like, this is this thing that, like, ladies have layers to make their hair look thicker. And actually, it's not true. when you layered your hair, it actually just looked a lot thinner. And with you, <laughs> it's all about, sorry, finer. Um, it's all about one leg pair with you and then just yeah. you can do shape at the front but you can't as soon as you start layering this it goes to the shape of your head and goes really flat <laughs> sorry no it's true i agree i agree i didn't yeah, know at the time your... i was like why isn't this fucking working it's about right. people different people every person has their own unique hair texture and mine is akin to children's hair because it's part asian part caucasian part whatever and for one reason or another it just, it probably looks best a bit more blocky with bits at the front. To end with, um, and also I will say there's been, those were the anomalies amongst a sea of fantastic haircuts. I, and I think I came to the conclusion that the hair I had last year when I was filming 
next in fashion in LA is my favorite hair where it's just kind of like a medium length has body yeah. to it these front bits here yeah. <clears throat> it's taken that... us 15 years but we know now what we like um what do you think um I can achieve today with the George Northwood bag of goodies that you sent my way. I drew, I drew this. Oh, I love that. That's yeah. You. Okay. Fine. I like that. That's cute. You've sent me some scissors and a comb. And, you know, we're going to now on your channel, I'm going to self cut my hair under your instruction. But just quickly, what am I going to go for? During these times of isolation, I'm not really encouraging people to do a drastic change because yeah. all we can really do is trim today but actually that works quite nicely because I think your hair it's a little bit longer than you filming in LA but actually yeah. it's still not too dissimilar and for me this is still the sweet spot of your hair so I think we just trim it today and just for because I don't really want to encourage any restyling online no but why don't we trim it today but then obviously when we're out of quarantine then we can go back to that kind of sweet spot that you like but anything between like long bob to collarbone works on you so it's got to be we'll just trim the ends yeah and we will reshape the front bit how achievable do you think it is to do a at home haircut it's i think it's very achievable if you don't do not go bold don't get confident <laughs> don't get cocky <laughs> okay well thank you everyone for watching this hair consultation with uh, george and i uh, don't forget to subscribe ring the bell um make sure that you leave your comments which are as always very welcome and do watch the next video which i'll be doing on george's channel where finally i give my hair the snip so thank you so much and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me <laughs>